This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and very interesting personalities in the world of entertainment. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Nimide Kombi and Ife Oluwa Oshoke. Hey, guys. How, are you doing? How was your weekend? Why are we doing Late. no black this morning? Oh, true. <laughs> well, uh -huh. I mean, I'm spicing things up, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do. Anyway. Well, it works. <laughs> it works? Oh, the red thing. The red thing. Oh, hair. okay. Did you say we what? Yes, yes, wow. I, just, I just saw it. No. Oh. How fun. Is this glass is recommended? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Exactly. All right. You need to wash it. You know, the, it's time. Mm. Mm. Okay, I will. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Minister of Works and Housing and former Governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashola, um, says um, that the movies we get basically promotes money ritual and encourage kidnapping. The minister was guest speaker at the fourth annual public lecture organized by the United Action for Change themed security of citizens as a social contract. He said that the belief system reinforced through Nollywood movies could be fueling kidnapping, given the number of persons the police have arrested with human skulls and other parts, or other body parts, with the motive of money ritual, and that this belief system must go. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I want you guys to go first. <laughs> Why? I get your takes on this one. Why? No, but I think he was saying the truth. Mm. Because if you look at it, um, there are so many, um, there are so many beliefs that have been reinforced by Nollywood that we actually have no proof for. Mm. There are so many things that we, most of the time, whenever I ask people, okay, why do you believe in this thing? Haven't you watched this movie? Mm. Haven't you watched the Kotoye? Haven't you watched Yami? You know, they just keep on mentioning this. Yami Oshirunga. Yami Oshirunga. And they say that those are the, those are the, that is the proof they have that these mm. things actually exist. And when you watch a movie, for instance, and then you, you see them doing money ritual, you see them, um, the Babala would here says that bring the head of somebody and then you will get money. That unconsciously, in your consciousness, you believe. He also touched you on the pants for Ben's that. Spirit. You know, mm. even the pants for Ben's. <laughs> nobody, I, I did not meet anybody that actually witnessed it. It was just, oh, how do you know this happened? I heard. How do you know this happened? This person told me this. There is no actual concrete proof that any of these things exist. Mm. And Nigerians are the victims of this because but now somebody that, watched this. things that are supposedly spiritual, are mm. there really proofs for them? Yeah, there isn't really proof for them. But okay, for instance, when you go to church mm -hmm. and then you worship God, mm -hmm. that one is different from one. There's no actual proof. I've not met anybody that made their money from mm -mm. Like, money You are still taking it back. I'm saying generally, when things are, are said to be spiritual, spiritual, can you actually prove them? You can't prove them because most of the time it's based on a lot of people their spirituality is based on their own personal experiences mm. but what my issue with this um nollywood belief is that other than hearsay mm. there is no actual proof that yeah. that okay. right, so body parts me, I, I totally agree with him um i read what he said extensively you know when this conversation comes on social media they just pick one line so one line or two lines and then run along with it create memes and attack each other but i i read through um what um they said he said at the event and i think he made a lot of sense because i believe that the stakeholders in nollywood should begin to understand the level of influence and power they hold mm. um, in the society and begin to use that rightly so you're here telling us how the almost the only way to make big money is um blood money right yeah. and i was telling i was speaking with i can't remember who i was speaking with um last week and i was saying that those that were born or had to go through the 80s and the 90s and have still become successful in doing things that are legit and push themselves should actually be given some level of accolades mm -hmm. because those were the times where you hear anybody that is rich is a ritualist any artist that is making it is from the illuminati yeah. i mean those were the things that were reinforced into our um subconscious so mind you know and but when we look at their hollywood counterparts they make you understand that for you to be um, strong.
strong successful. or successful, you what hard. you actually, aside from working hard, they make you understand the power of networking. Mm -hmm. And whether we want to say it has worked for us or not, you can pick out one or two stories that you can say, I have read this person's story, I followed this person's history, and I know that the fact that this person was able to connect with this person or go to this event, attend this networking section has helped their life. And that's what they teach you. But for us here, it's more like it has to be a miracle. It's not really about hard work. And I also saw people trying to tell them to go into tech and sciences, and that mm -hmm. made me laugh, really, because you cannot give what you don't have. What do we have in our schools from secondary to university? What, what tech innovations have you done to say you want to put them into movies? I know there are some. There are really very few. Yeah, you can funny. create stories around that, but that cannot, at this point, be the major backbone of our industry. So, yes, mm -hmm. don't tell ritualist story. Don't tell stories of kidnapping and money ritual, but there are still other ways to tell stories that would show our culture and yeah. our way of life. And I wanted to, to add to that, the truth is, I can understand when Nigerians are coming from when they say they're tired of the ritualist stories because mm. when you look around Nigeria alone, there are so many stories to tell. Mm -hmm. You can tell the story of there are so many things that happen in the north. There are so many yeah, things that happen just here. Legend in the of south. Felipe, that's you, one. you see, yeah. there's so many stories that we have in Nigeria that you don't actually need a huge mega block um mega blockbuster. What's the movie that was done about Ebola again? Um so ninety three days. days. I mean, that movie was stories. a beautiful movie. So oh, so 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 dog into our basically archives, I think really. I think you guys have actually covered um everything because I saw people People bashing him and I thought I would see somebody on this table that would bash him as mm, well but sense. glad I didn't see that because we need to change our narratives mm. like we need to tell our stories because I don't even know one ritualist I haven't seen one before I don't even know what they look like yeah. but you keep putting that in movies now we are um, perceived outside the country as people don't want to come back home and you're wondering why they don't want to come back home because what they get access to at the movies and that's what tells our story right mm. and then they see people getting kidnapped they see people doing money rituals why would i want to come home you understand mm. i'd rather just stay there so um i, I agree with fashola on this one so big yeah. ups and oh, sorry, I just wanted to add that watching that can also even motivate some people to believe that by doing to those look for things, things that you know, by, by doing those things, that is how they are going to make their money. So now you would need to fix up when mm. it comes to the stories that they tell. Okay.